Hey there, welcome to the computer corner, or as my friends from middle school used to call it, get a regular hobby, you frickin' nerd. Are you a productivity god with many thousands of Chrome tabs slowing down your computer? Are you a pro gamer wishing for a handful of RTX 3090s so you could play the latest Fortnite patches in 12K HDR? Well, what if I told you there was a way that you could get your hands on all the power you could ever need? I'm of course talking about the cloud, just somebody else's computer. And I'm talking about some of the biggest machines they offer up there. Now, full disclosure, about a year ago, I started filming this video in the hopes that I could get one of those uh, 12 terabyte machines from either Google, AWS, or Microsoft. I wanted to try Microsoft first since I had some new signup credit over there. And then while browsing documentation for Azure like the nerd that I am, I came across the M416MS V2 virtual machine. Not only does it have 416 virtual CPUs of processing power, it also offers 12 terabytes of RAM. And this got me thinking about some of the videos that I've seen on YouTube answering the question, how many Chrome tabs can you open with X amount of memory? The largest I had seen was a Linus Tech Tips video where he tried to open a bunch of tabs on two terabytes of memory. Man, I used to look good. Well, as you can see by the title of this video, that didn't work out. Uh, in a nutshell, Microsoft requires business financial analysis for core quota increase requests over 200 cores. Uh, AWS doesn't support hourly use of those machine sizes, and uh, Google claims that they're literally out of capacity for this kind of machine. I've been trying to do this for a year. Uh, these machines are just too expensive and too rarely used without a commitment for it to be supported by my use case. But at this point, I'm in too deep. I still want to know how many Chrome tabs we can throw at four terabytes of memory. We're going to choose Google Cloud's M1 Ultra M160 for this. I'm not picking AWS because my account there is bare and I don't want to have to bother with quota requests, and I'm not picking Microsoft Azure because I haven't gotten the COVID vaccine yet. But above all, the equivalent AWS and Azure machine type only has 128 processing threads, and that's... well, it's less than 160, so we're going with the Google one. In Linus's video, he hits a brick wall where he doesn't run out of memory, but the tabs begin to struggle to stay loaded. Uh, there are a couple things that my experiment will do differently to ensure that that doesn't happen, or at least try to. First, we're going to try this with Windows Server 2019, which may have a scheduler better tuned for this sort of thing, and if that doesn't work, then we're just going to switch to Linux. Second, we're throwing a few more CPU cores at this than he did. Uh, he used an AMD Epic 128 threaded CPU. Uh, we're using Intel Xeon E7s in some multi-socket configuration. Now, this does come with the penalty of slightly slower clock speeds, but it makes up for it with 32 additional processing threads, which I think in this case might be more important. And if it turns out that the CPU is still our bottleneck, we can throw even more cores at it by using an even larger Epic CPU. Finally, Linus had issues with tabs crashing and reloading. Uh, this could be because Chrome has a tab discarding feature that will unload unused or inactive web pages to conserve resources. There's a way to disable this one tab at a time in Chrome, and there's an extension that alleges it can automatically prevent all tab discards. So, I mean, we'll see. One deficit we have compared to his experiment is that we don't have a GPU on these massive memory machines. Everything will be software rendered. Uh, this may or may not make a difference. As far as I know, Chrome tries to hardware accelerate where it can, so a GPU will definitely reduce processor load. But when it comes to thousands upon thousands of tabs, that benefit might be lost. Okay, so it took several attempts uh, to get a VM that actually ran. I don't know if it was the region or if it was because I was trying to use preemptability to save a couple bucks, but uh, here we are. <laughs> the first thing I always do in Server Manager is I disable the IE Enhanced Security Configuration because that is perhaps the most annoying feature of server distributions of Windows. Change graph to... Oh yeah, baby! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Oh my god, oh that's great. So we're just going to keep this open. So we're going to do what Internet Explorer was intended to do, download Google Chrome. So the first thing we're going to try here is Cinebench, just to see what this processor is even capable of. <laughs> okay, so I got Chrome installed, and I have that extension installed in Chrome. I've also written a short Ruby script that samples the top 500 domains, and it'll open 100 of them at random every time I run the Chrome command. There's a slight problem with the Ruby script. <laughs> Are these quotes necessary? Ah, there we go. We're off to the races. So, 
while these are loading, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make sure that all of these auto discards are off and it appears that the extension is working. But it looks like they've already all loaded. 60 gigs. It's not even, not even flinching. Let's do it again. And we're also blessed with a nice and fast internet connection because uh, it's running in a Google data center. So yeah, it looks like everything is loaded in memory, just the way it's coming into view so quickly. Everything's at least laid out in memory, if not rendered. Let's just keep going. I can probably launch several at a time here. So I just hammered it to reach it to a thousand Chrome tabs. Unexpectedly close the connection. That is not ideal. We might have just asked too much of the network stack just then. I don't think I should start that many Chrome tabs at once. Yeah, that's, that does seem ill-advised. When we start to see a lot of these globes, and that means something is up. Let's go back to opening at 100 at a time. We're at 400 right now. So while these last couple tabs are loading, I just want to check in here and see and make sure that everything is going according to plan. We've used 110 gigabytes of RAM, uh, we've hit 2000, and I want to make sure that these aren't getting discarded. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a random tab that has a logo loaded uh, up in one of these top, or top ones and see how quickly it renders. The question is, why are all of these dancing up here? Uh, I've noticed that there's a couple, you know, usual suspects, like uh, the, this ES one. So we're gonna go ahead and let's just pick one at random. Boom, that loaded very quickly. So there you go. That's two, we're at 2000, we're barely making a dent and it's still pretty responsive. I guess let's keep going. I don't know when to stop, uh, obviously, since I'm doing this. Okay, so we made it to 6,000 tabs, which I believe is where Linus stopped because the system was becoming unusable. We're at 177 gigabytes of RAM out of 3.8 terabytes. I don't think we're ever going to reach 3.8 terabytes. That just seems unattainable at this rate. I'm just going to click on a random one up here. Come on, little guy. Hmm, so that doesn't bode well. Yeah, it's not appearing to reload. It's just really slow at switching. Chrome is just struggling. It is getting faster as I use it though. But just to show that the system is usable, it's a touch laggy, a little laggier than I would expect just regular uh, remote desktop to be. Yeah, yeah, let's open up Cinebench. Yeah. The system's a little slower, but it's still crazy usable. We can definitely keep going with Chrome tabs because we certainly haven't, we certainly aren't anywhere near four terabytes. We're not even near one, not even near a quarter. Eight times 1024 divided by, so we could theoretically have 188,000-ish tabs if Windows can even go that high. And that's another thing that occurred to me while this was running. The actual Windows shell can only handle so many handles. Uh, the GDI, which is responsible for everything you see on the screen, essentially. Uh, it's a little more complicated than that, and I'm by no means a Windows expert, but there is a theoretical limit to how many things you can actually put on the screen at the same time. Um, now, we can push it further. We can push it further. So just for the sake of time, we're going to go to 10,000, but we're going to be a little more aggressive, which might result in a couple more failed tabs than we're used to. But I mean, it's it's worth seeing. Uh, something I want to do before I do that, though, is I want to cascade all those windows. Bad idea. What? Yeah, these are, I mean, they're all still being animated in the background. Uh, switching tabs is slow, man. It's not as slow as I would expect, but it's still pretty slow. Okay, we didn't get very far. We're about to reach 6,500 here, and I think Chrome is just broken. I think we aren't giving it enough time to load the pages and get settled in. I still want to see what a thousand Chrome tabs looks like. We're going to open the remaining 35 windows. Just 
with 10 seconds in between. Just, just, just totally destroy it. I totally expect to get just massive amounts of failed tabs because it just can't make all of these connections at once. But it looks like the Windows shell is just struggling. It is just boarding the struggle bus here. We are definitely pushing either Chrome or Windows to its limits. Oh, it's going for it. We're going for gold here. Let's really stress it by continuously cascading all these windows just to see the state of the tabs. It's a really bad idea. I get it. Bad idea. Go ahead, Jake. Oh, yeah. Oh, bad idea. Oh, that's the stuff. Now it has to re-render everything. Even while it's struggling, the system is still surprisingly usable. Let's run Cinebench again. Yeah, it's still crushing it. It was better than before. Well, it just killed all my Chrome processes by itself. I think Windows just gave up. I wonder if there's a logging event. Okay, so I guess it didn't log anything. I guess it just decided enough of that. Now, admittedly, it was dumb to ever think that we were going to reach four terabytes, uh, mainly for the memes. But the funny thing is, I'll bet you if I start Chrome again, I kind of want to do it. <laughs> what is the worst that could happen? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, no, here we go. <laughs> oh, it's not even reopening all of them. <laughs> Look at how few there are. Well, I just wanted to see what that button does. I clearly... Clearly Chrome isn't up to the task. Okay, so uh, what did we learn? <laughs> I don't know. So I don't know what's going on here, but in Linux, we hit a wall much faster than we did in Windows, like a whole lot faster. We're hitting an issue here where tabs refuse to load and we're also seeing some unresponsive things uh, even if we exit the pages, things just refuse to load. I feel like this has something to do with a limit in the kernel, uh, some, maybe file descriptors or open socket connections. I think having the extra cores did help, but at the same time, something's keeping it from working in Linux the way that it should. Uh, so I think we're just going to call it there. So unfortunately, that's kind of it. Uh, beyond what these servers are intended for, I don't really have another use case for them. We did the Chrome thing on 4 terabytes, and uh, it was kind of disappointing. The operating system was the bottleneck. It wasn't the processor, and it wasn't the RAM. I thought Linux would do better, but it kind of fell apart at 1800 tabs, and I think we would need to fine-tune the kernel to handle that many processes, uh, connections, and possibly file descriptors uh, being opened and closed all the time. It's possible, I'm sure, and I'll bet you Linux would do a better job, but fine-tuning the kernel and perhaps building it from scratch is completely out of the scope of this stupid little video. So mission accomplished, I guess. Yeah.